terrible late season hunting conditions. It's warm. Tough, tough hunt. I just have to wait and see what happens. That's the best plan we got. We did it. The choice is about three things. Real hunting, going after the animal of your choosing with the weapon you love. Real adventure, from the mountains of Canada to the deserts of Mexico. But most of all, it's about real people. Hunters with families, jobs, and dreams. Their skills will be put to the test. Every situation is different. Success or failure. It all comes down to the choice. Drop the That one's for you. Oh, yeah, baby! <laughs> <laughs>Welcome to this week's The Choice. Yes, and this week we're going to our neighboring state, the great state of Iowa. There you go. Joe and Z are heading out late season with their TCs. Yes, and they're going to do some severe whitetail disordering. There you go. Disordering. Like disordering. That. This week's lucky logo. Delta McKenzie, best target in the world. <laughs> if you happen to see the Delta McKenzie logo, at the end of the show we'll tell you what to do with that now. Yes. Well, you know what? Let's not waste any time because yeah. with between the great, great deer hunting in Iowa, their hush program right. and everything else, we, we got lots to show you. That's right, so let's head to Iowa. Okay. And you can stay here and I'm gonna go over there. Joe and I's got our TC sighted in. We're headed to Iowa. We're going over a day early. We want to do a little scouting before season opens on Monday morning. And it is actually terrible late season hunting conditions. It's warm, deer are scattered, nothing is locked on the food source. The food plots, the, the stands and stuff we had set up earlier weren't gonna work. We were looking at it, we were gonna have a tough hunt trying to get these bucks out in the open before dark. We're not gonna be hunting this in the morning, but we're just trying to see what's moving back into the bedding area now. We've gotta hunt this field in a south wind, and we're supposed to get south wind in about three days. If that happens, with what we just saw pile off this field, we know the deer are there. Couldn't quite tell if there are bucks or does early in light. This time of year, we're really hoping for a lot of snow, or at least a decent amount that's locking these deer into the food source. It's, it's supposed to be 52 today. We are definitely on an uphill climb to kill two big white tail in Iowa. That first morning, Joe and I were in an elevated box blind overlooking this little wooded ravine there, and uh, I don't even think we saw a squirrel. That afternoon, our brilliant strategy was to pack an Ameristep blind in the field, set it up by some round bales, and wait for these deer to come through out of the bedding area, and they're gonna cross right in front of us going to the cornfield. We sat there long enough to get totally bored, and these deer funnel up over this hill right into this valley on top of us. At dark, camera lights out. First day of hunting goose egg. It's the second day of Iowa muzzleloader 2011 with me and Z. And uh, our buddy Galen yesterday had been watching this field for us while we hunted a big box blind. And he saw 140 class eight pointer go in this fence. So we decided with this wind, we're actually gonna try and slip in there and see if he's gonna come back that same route today. Mornings, we're actually trying to hunt our does, trying to kill some deer for hush and feed the hungry here at the holiday season. But um, if that eight comes in, I guarantee you one thing, Z and I aren't gonna let him walk if we get a shot at that old dog. <laughs> we're expecting those deer to be coming out of this cornfield, which is the only food source. Heading back to the north into this big timbered bed. We found a good brush pile to hide in. We feel real good about the cover. The gun's steady, I got it on the Caldwell, so I don't have to move a lot. I think. Oh, they just gotta show up. So we're expecting these deer to come in on the left side out of this cornfield. And I look to the right and bam, 80 yards away, four does standing there feeding right in front of us, just to the right. I'm right-handed, so getting the dead shot field pod moved around to get the shot, it's just not gonna happen with these deer there looking towards us. So, slowly, we do the switcheroo. I grab the camera, Z grabs the gun, because he's a lefty. The does were actually nice enough to stand there and let us do it. The doe trotted right out in the open and looked straight at us. We got the gun and the camera switched over. I got the gun. If she would have turned slowly, I would have done my best to put her in the hush program. Another goose egg. This is gonna be a tough hunt. The third morning, Joe and I went back to where we had the doe rodeo in the first place, and uh, 
didn't have a chance. The does came out, but they, they didn't come out of the brush where we had a shot. Another perfect day, no buck sighted. So far this trip, we hadn't seen anything with a rack over 100 inches. But south winds, we have been dying for a south wind to get on this farm. The first farm we scouted, we know we've got some quality bucks on that farm. We've been waiting all year to hunt this farm. Actually, this field, we knew where we wanted to be with the south wind. That night we got settled in, we, we were laying on a dam, a dike there where we could see into the field and we were hidden well because the stands that we had set were at the wrong ends of the field. It just wasn't working for what we had. We sat there all afternoon and nothing came through but does. We had some does feed in close, probably 30, 40 yards, but that was, that was the buck spot for this trip and we knew we did not want to bust a doe and go tramping all over that field with a doe kill. Where are these bucks? Why aren't they coming out? And we are not going to do it. We are not busting a doe when we know what we have here. We're going to hold it out. We've been trying to shoot does for three days, to, and there they are, but we are not taking a shot. That's the best plan we got. We're going to try and do it. Oh, dude, he's right here, Zendel. It's morning and we're going to come down this west edge and set up on the west side. We were watching those deer come in the other morning when we first got here we were doing some priest scouting. And the deer filtered back off to the west on that ag field. So we're figuring if we get on this west edge before they get to the corner we're going to have a shot. If the wind shifts at all we're stuck. So it's going to be a hit or miss but it's the best chance we've got. It's the only farm we've even seen shooters on yet. I, I don't know. That's the best plan we got. We're going to try and do it. And we're parked about a, over a half mile away from the farm up with the, the road on the right of way. We're gonna walk all the way in because we don't want to blow those deer out of the fields. The way things have gone, it can't be any worse than the way the sign's gone. So, But I think we got a really good chance of at least killing a, yeah, no, if not a nice buck in there. So we're gonna give it a shot and see what happens there. Well, Z and I played it right, man. We sat down, the wind was good, the deer were doing exactly what we wanted. We come in the east side of that cornfield, we're funneling into the west. And this big nine, we'd already seen two before light. You can't even, we don't even have footage of them. It took him probably 10 minutes to cross that field and come up close enough for us to get a shot. And with the angle of our wind, we knew that if he hit our wind before we got a good shot off, we would never see him again. know man when I travel with Z I know he's got something in his bag and it's like a squirrel with nuts he just he stores his stuff away I know Z has chocolate and we're gonna celebrate with some chocolate <laughs> ain't that right Z nothing like celebration chocolate mm. there you go buddy Z and I gave him a good half hour, and we never saw him come out of that creek. We're gonna walk up and check the blood. I'm not gonna talk, nothing else, in case he's in that creek bottom. We removed a shot, and it looks like everything's good. But with a muzzleloader, that smoke covers everything. You never know. Oh, dude, he's right here, Zendel. He's right here. Oh, Z. He's a nine. Nice. Late season, these deer should be patterned and not easy to get on, but a lot easier than what we've had. These deer have just been tough, flat out tough to get on. And uh, coming out after dark on us, just being difficult. 
we have hunted hard this muzzleloader. It's late muzzleloader. We should be walking through snow. These deer should be piling into the food source and they've been coming out after dark and leaving early and it has been an absolute tough hunt, but uh, finally Z and I decided we're gonna give it a shot. That's our only chance. It's the last day to hunt this farm. We know what's on it. I always got a program called the Hush Program. Help us stop hunger. And I had the opportunity to actually donate my deer. And in this economic time, that kind of program is a staple for some people. So Z and I decided, you know what? We're gonna donate this buck. We got meat at home. We're gonna help somebody else eat. It had been a couple weeks since Joe and I had been there. This is my first chance to film, and we're going to see if we can bring a buck down. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Go to Facebook.com slash Ralph and Vicky. Jamie and I were headed back to Iowa for the last few days of muzzleloader season. It had been a couple weeks since Joe and I had been there and I was anxious to get back in there after those bucks. This is my first chance to film and we're going to see if we can bring a buck down. The first morning Jamie and I were set up in the draw where Joe and I had hunted a couple weeks before. We actually had a doe coming out of the brush. We thought she was going to walk right out in the open. We need her to take literally like two more steps to clear the trees and sure enough she changed her mind and went the other way. We, we had a, a nice doe we were gonna take. She was just about to step clear. And I think she hit where we walked in, not seeing the deer that we thought we would. This weather, it was really warm yesterday, and it's it's 27 this morning, but it, there's no snow, and the deer just, it's like it's summertime. Tough, tough hunting. Second morning, nothing. But we knew the winds were gonna be right that afternoon to be where we wanted to be. We got to the farm early, trimmed a few cedars, and slipped in to build us a blind right on the fence on the edge of the field. With the south winds, we knew those bucks were gonna be coming right out to us. Well, Jam and I are settled in, it's about 2.30 in the afternoon. And this is our favorite field in Iowa to hunt. Tomorrow's the last day of muzzleloader season, so if we don't kill a buck tonight, tomorrow it'll probably be doe, buck, whatever walks out. As the evening wore on, Jamie and I started noticing that, that we saw several shooter bucks on the east end of that field. We could catch glimpses of them through the brush. If our winds held true and we had a south wind for tomorrow evening, we were gonna have to move at least 150 yards east of where we were at tonight. Well, it's the last morning of the muzzleloader season here in Iowa. This morning we're sitting at a draw on a, on a shooting house. Jamie and I sat on a field last night and saw some beautiful bucks. The same winds. It's gonna be hotter today. They were out plenty early yesterday, probably 3.45, 4 o'clock, so we had an hour of daylight. That's where we're gonna be this afternoon. As the morning wore on, I, I kind of peeked around the side of the glide to the downwind side, and about 80 yards, there stood a doe. It took us a bit of shuffling around, but we eventually got turned around to where the camera and the gun could get on her at the same time. Yes. Small, Miss Small Buddy. Ready? Yes. As the smoke cleared, Jamie and I were still wondering if we had a deer down. Jamie, I don't see nothing over there to tell me that I shot that deer. Give her a few minutes. See if the see if the hush program gets a doe today or <laughs> or it's been like the rest of my year <laughs> <laughs> that doe came in directly behind us we had to do some fidgeting around it and the bad thing is we're not sure we hit her because the smoke just lingered in front of us for it seemed like 10 seconds and there was nothing moving when it smoke cleared every time we're in Iowa we do our best to take a doe for the hush program Iowa's hush program allows hunters to do just a little bit to help feed the hungry Great. That's why we couldn't see her. She fell into this dip. This dough will make a lot of great meals for some less fortunate people. Well, it's last night a muzzleloader here in Iowa. Ooh, yeah, it's a big ten. That sums up my whole my whole week. It's last night a muzzleloader here in Iowa. Jamie and I are set up about, I don't know, 100 yards east of where we were last night. 
and uh, probably 150 altogether. They came out right in front of us last night. The winds are the same tonight. Hopefully they do the same thing. We got in here. I had to go out and trim a little bit. We put a little blind up here on this barbed bar fence. It's about 130 yards across. We can shoot the east half of the field. Last night we could shoot the west half. I just have to wait and see what happens. We haven't been able to pattern these deer at all. Jamie and I got settled in and the first thing in the field was a great group of gobblers that fed across in front of us just like the night before. And that really seemed to break everything open and we started to see deer. So we've gone four days now without seeing a shooter buck. Wouldn't you know it, out walks a monster. Well, half a monster because he was only half racked. And we sat there after the week that we'd had so far, the first shooter buck we'd seen all week came out and fed 100 yards from us and that sums up my whole, my whole week. Yeah, it's a big den. It's the same buck as last night. He walked by at 100 yards and all we can do is watch him walk. A little while later, we noticed a shooter coming off the hillside, coming into the field. He came out following a doe, and as he got closer, Jamie and I both decided that he was the shooter we were looking for. When we heard the impact, Jamie and I both knew that we finally had that Iowa buck on the ground. First trip filming, great friends, awesome. We did it. Oh my. Oh, he's laying down. That buck came down the valley with a doe, stayed in the creek forever. We had to work around this tree and I was getting nervous. So we pulled around on this side and, and we dropped him right where he stood. We got the blind and I went and got the buggy. He's laying out here in the cornfield. We're gonna go get him. He's a beautiful buck and uh, we're heading home tomorrow. Well, it's the last day of muzzleloader season here in Iowa. And Ralph and Vicki were nice enough to let me come back out and give them just four more days of effort to try to knock down a buck. The hunting has been real sporadic. They, they, there's no snow. It's, it's about 57 degrees today on January 10th. These deer are just going wherever they feel like it. We're, we're having a heck of a time getting ahead of them on these, on these food patterns. This morning we shot a great mature doe, took her to the hush program, got her donated. Tonight we sat 150 yards from where we sat last night, but all these bucks were feeding east. And he came out tonight, he came over, he came 100 yards west of where we were tonight. He came out and he had already shed half his rack. So he got a free pass. We've been chasing these deer everywhere. And we finally tonight got to where they were coming out and we just couldn't let this guy pass. Hey, congrats to Joe and Z, you guys did awesome out there. Iowa, you make us proud out there. The Hush program, everything going on. What are you doing? Corn's not looking too good. No? No. Oh. This week's lucky logo was Delta McKinsey. Best targets in the world. If you happen to see the lucky logo, Delta McKinsey, you need to log on to choicetv.com, click on the lucky logo button, fill out some information. Someone's gonna win Target, plus a bunch of other great stuff great from our goods. manufacturers. Yeah. Look at what it looks like you in the morning. Next week we're gonna head to Alaska. Alaska, Red Frozen Alaskan Adventures, where Vicky's up to bat with her TC Dimension and well, you don't want to miss the one. adventure for Float, next week. It's my Alaskan cruise, wait till you see this yeah, that's one. That's it. So then she I want to thank you for making your choice. The choice. We'll see you next week. Why would you say I look like a piece of corn?